The symbolism in the ancient world which point us to the hidden knowledge is staring us right in the eyes. It's not about how well this is hidden or protected, it's more about whether you are willing to explore and try to understand it. Many people are not even prepared to consider this possibility, let alone explore it. They already have their minds made up, which is why this knowledge is easy to attain if you are open-minded, but challenging if you are not even willing to contemplate it. In my previous video, which will be linked in the description, I discussed the hidden knowledge available since ancient times. An inner force dormant within us, awaiting activation, either through evolution, trigger or with intent and dedication. This force will enable you to grasp a broader reality and in my opinion an upcoming event in the future will accelerate the awakening process for everyone. Now let's delve into the ancient symbolism that guide us towards this force. The dormant energy known by many names, one of which is Kundalini from Hindu culture, represents the feminine energy or Shakti. Kundalini which means coiled up in Sanskrit, becomes activated and rises like a snake from the base chakra to the Sahasrara chakra symbolized by the lotus flower. According to the yoga tradition, this energy whether seen as a serpent or a goddess, lies dormant at the base of the spine in all human beings. In this description, we can observe the goddess Lakshmi emerging from the lotus flower signifying a fully awakened Kundalini. The lotus flower, also known as the thousand petal, symbolizes the highest chakra point slightly above the head, that's why the goddess is emerging from the flower. But now let's see the similar symbology in the ancient Egyptian culture. The Egyptian equivalent of Lakshmi is the goddess Hathor and this depiction can be found in the Hathor temple. From the lotus flower emerges light and inside the light there is a snake stretching forward. The light and the snake touch the tip of the head, the crown chakra of the people in the carving. In other representations, the same scene is depicted with a jet pillar with arms holding the light. The jet symbolizes the spine as the energy rises through the spine to the top of the head. The pillar is connected with Osiris and some refer to it as the spine of Osiris. In the Osiris temple we can find the flower of life imprinted on the walls, just like the thousand petal lotus in Hinduism, this represents the open crown chakra or the awakened energy. Now let's go to Sumeria and examine the ancient depictions of the Anunnaki holding the pinecon. The closed pinecon represents the dormant inner energy while an open pinecon symbolizes an enlightened spirit. From these depictions we can observe how they point the pinecon towards the lotus flower symbolizing the opening of the crown chakra. In this portrayal we can see their spirit extending out of their bodies with wings. On their wrists we can see the open lotus symbolizing awakened energy. We can also find the pinecon in Greek mythology. In fact, the Greek equivalent of Osiris is the god Dionysus who carries a wand called Tersus with a pinecon on the top. The wand is often depicted covered with ivy vines and leaves resembling snakes rising upwards. Here we see Demeter, the goddess from the Eleusinian mysteries, depicted with two snakes rising symbolizing the dormant divine energy. The Lucinian Mysteries were a secret religion with rituals dedicated to awakening inner energy much like today's secret societies. The Caduceus, the famous wand worn by Hermes Trismegistus, is basically the same as that of Dionysus, however it has more symbolism. The two snakes are rising and above them we can see the winged disc or the awakened spirit, just like in ancient Sumer, Egypt and the first monotheistic Zoroastrian religion. Of course this has everything to do with awakening of the inner energy, the coiled serpent or the goddess. In ancient Celtic mythology the tribe of the gods also known as Tuata de Danan are the gods with the awakened inner energy. We can see the serpent on top of their heads indicating the awakened energy from the crown chakra. If you take a closer look you will also see the sun behind their heads. This inner energy is related to the sun and the sun god. Remember, the increased activity of the sun is what will awaken this power. The lotus is also considered the flower of the sun as it opens its leaves during the day and on his head there are blossom flowers too. The thistle, the flower of Scotland, is another symbol from ancient Celtic mythology. 
It also represents the awakening of inner energy and is connected to the sun. When it's closed, the energy is dormant and when it's open, it indicates the awakened energy. And that's why all ancient religions are connected to the sun. But now let's go in ancient Mesoamerica. The Mayans and the Aztec gods were portrayed as feathered serpents. And from this sculpture we can see how the serpent is emerging from the flower. This depiction is named the Vision Serpent. Notice how the snake rises from the spine indicating the awakening of the Kundalini. Here's another example of the serpent rising from the spine. He is holding the same bag that can be found in Sumer and India. Here's another example of the rising serpent found in different parts of the world symbolizing enlightenment. And let's not forget that indigenous Amazonian tribes created the famous Ayahuasca brew. A complex mixture that involves two plants for the desired effect, with one plant specifically used to inhibit the metabolism and enable the oral activation of DMT. This brew is so potent that in my opinion it allows you to experience something even beyond the awakened Kundalini where physical body is not even needed. In North America there is the giant serpent mount in Ohio, symbolizing the rising of the inner energy. At the beginning it's coiled up, then it rises towards the egg which is a symbol of Shiva or the cosmic egg. There is another mound close to this one called New Ark Earthworks, also depicting a Shiva Lingam shape. Shiva is a very important deity as he is the inventor of yoga through which you can awaken your Kundalini. The aboriginal tribes had the rainbow serpent, an immortal being and creator god in aboriginal mythology. We can see the serpent coiled up and also raising above their heads. The aboriginal people believe in the Mimi spirits who have lived and continue to do so in the rock crevices since the beginning of time. In the dream time they taught many skills including hunting, fishing, painting on rock and bark, ceremonial songs and dances to the old medicine men. And these medicine men in turn passed their knowledge on to the elders of the tribe so they could teach other chosen men. The medicine man is the most powerful person in the community and is ritually sanctioned after undergoing special initiation into their magical craft. In my opinion, their inner energy is awakened, allowing them to perceive a broader reality and interact with these higher beings. This is a depiction of Fushi and his wife Nua in ancient China. They are credited with the creation of humanity and similar to the Naga people from India they are portrayed as half serpents. I can create an entire video about this and how the symbolism is connected to the DNA sequence, old stonemason symbology and as well as the Dharma wheel. Let me know if you would like to see the video. So who were the Naga or the serpent people? In my opinion they were a separate group of humans with awakened inner energy or at a higher level on the evolutionary scale. The aboriginal people thought of the Mimi spirits as ancient beings who were once humans but now they are so evolved that they don't have physical bodies. And the cutting edge of evolution here, these are very very highly evolved people, we can't even imagine what kind what kind of person that will be. He may not have a physical body at all. What's the habitat, so to speak, of this group here? Well, you just go out and you find them. They're, they're all over the place. The habitat of this group here, what do you think, what do you think you find these people here, hey? Um, <laughs> uh, I, I suspect that you would find them in universities, you'd find the, you know, the people who are very bright, people who are uh, in the leading edge of professions. <laughs> I mean, it's an intellectual thing. Well, I suggest that you find them in mental hospitals, in nut houses. And well, the reason for that is that these people, they live in a different reality, in a reality which, which is very changed, and few of them are adapted to live in this reality. So naturally, they can't function very well. So the only safe place, only good place for them, would be the mental hospital, unless they can integrate their, their, their different view of reality with their daily lives. Now, if they can integrate it, then we have people like, like Newton, like Darwin, like, like, uh, like uh, mean, so Faraday. Great. These are the so-called genius. Additionally, the ancient Hindu text teaches that the Naga people were so evolved that they left this dimension and now reside in a higher dimension. 
they didn't necessarily have snake bodies, the snake is a representation of their awakened energy. In other words, they were represented as half snake and half human as a symbol of the rise and Kundalini. But that doesn't mean that our DNA wasn't changed by someone or something. As I mentioned in my previous video, we are likely somewhere in the middle of the food chain as there are far more evolved beings that existed before us. And perhaps there is another way beyond our current known technology to change or shape DNA. Now the question is why did the serpent, one of the most cherished symbols in the past, suddenly became associated with bad things? What kind of gift did Prometheus gave to humanity and why was he punished? What kind of tree is the tree of life? Was humanity hijacked by some group of malevolent higher beings or is this a natural process? Let me know if you wanna see this video. Don't forget to like and share the video and subscribe to my channel with notifications on. As I've stated in my previous video, I will be very grateful if you can help my channel by supporting me on Patreon because this is the only way for my research to continue because creating this video takes a lot of time. Thanks.